So you bought a hardtail, you welded it on, and now comes the fun part. It's time to align your rear wheel. Now, when I was building the bike you see behind me, I got stuck on this step, believe it or not, for a good two weeks because I could not figure out the best system for how to make sure that wheel was aligned properly. I didn't want to do it half-heartedly or get it just close enough. I wanted to do it the right way, but it seemed impossible to find anybody who had a system for putting their rear wheel into perfect alignment. So today, I'm going to take the guesswork out of it for you. I'm Grease. You're watching Grease's Garage, and I'm going to help you skip the struggle. There are three major factors that come into play to get that proper rear wheel alignment. The first is that your wheel must be centered in between your axle plates or your frame is not going to track properly. The second is that your brake caliper needs to be in line with your brake rotor so that your brakes will work properly. And lastly, your rear sprocket needs to be in line with your front sprocket. You cannot have a proper rear wheel alignment unless all three of these conditions are met. But Here's the Grease's Garage explanation that you're only gonna get on this channel. People often take situations like this where there's multiple measurements, all of which matter, and they fail to give you the most important piece of information, which is which of these measurements is to be the master measurement? Which of these measurements is the most important and where do I start? And they say, oh, well, well they're all important. You have to do all of them. That's not helpful. So, in this video, I'm going to give you the master measurement right off the bat. The rear wheel must be centered between the axle plates. That is the measurement on which you are going to start. So, let's talk about how we get that measurement. The first thing we're going to do is to measure the distance between our axle plates. Very important here that you measure the distance from the inside to the inside of your axle plates. You can see in this shot here, I've got the tape measure from inside to inside, and that's the measurement you're interested in. Do not take this measurement from the outside because it doesn't matter. Now that you've got the measurement from inside of axle plate to inside of axle plate, we need to figure out how much of that space is going to be taken up by the wheel itself. When I did this on my bike, I was working with a machinist who had a fancy tool that would slide through the wheel, clamp onto both ends, and give us the total width of the wheel. Fancy way to do it if you have that tool, but good chance that you watching this video right now don't own a tool like that because neither did I. So what are us average Joes going to do to get this measurement? We are gonna use our axle to help us out. But before we grab the axle, I need to make mention of two little spacers that are gonna come into this equation that are very important for you to retain. What you're seeing right here is a spacer that goes into the inset part of your wheel and sits up against your bearing. These are a factory part that come with the wheel. What I recommend is that for this next step, you leave these spacers installed. That's what I did when I centered my wheel and it ended up working out perfectly, so I recommend that you do the same thing. So, take these spacers, insert them into both sides of your wheel, and then slide your axle through your wheel. What you're going to do is take a Sharpie and make a mark on your axle where that spacer ends. What this measurement is capturing is the total space that your wheel and both of these spacers is going to take up in between those axle plates. What we're going to do with this measurement now is we're going to subtract it from the total space between the plates. Let's say for the sake of example that your axle plates were 10 inches apart and your wheel and the two spacers were eight inches wide. That would mean you have two inches of extra space between your axle plates that needs to be taken up by something. My measurement with a stock rear wheel, which is what I'm using on my bike, a 16 by five, actually ended up being almost exactly an inch of space on either side. So even though these are round numbers for an example, it's actually pretty close to what I saw on my bike. From here, you now know the size of the spacer you need on each side, and now we can start to talk about what we're going to use for those spacers. Now, spacer kits are sold on every motorcycle parts website imaginable. Pick one from your favorite company. The only thing that matters is that it be the correct diameter to slip over your axle. And essentially, they're just pieces of aluminum with a hole through them. On the opposite side of your wheel, you are gonna use your brake caliper as the spacer. 
The exception to this is if you have a really wide hardtail and a really narrow wheel, you might actually need to use your brake caliper plus a small extra spacer if you've got the extra room to take up. On my particular bike, like I said, I used a stock rear wheel. I did not need to use an extra spacer with the brake caliper. And in fact, my caliper was actually a little bit too big and I needed to mill it down. So let's talk about this because there's a hidden pitfall in this step that can ruin your caliper. And you'll have to buy a whole new one and go through the whole process over again. So for the sake of example, I have here the stock caliper that came on my soft tail. I didn't end up using this caliper on my build mainly because it is enormous and super heavy. So it will help us though to illustrate the point here. As you can see, we've got our brake pads right down in here. This is the inside face, the side that would face the wheel. This here is the outside face. So when you've got this piece right here acting as the spacer, which I do on my bike, my spacer needed to be 1.014 inches on this side. And this piece on my brake caliper was actually a little bit larger than that. It was more like 1.25, so I needed to shave it down. This is crucial. When you mill down this piece, you must, must, must mill the outside face. Now, this caliper is designed to work with a stock brake rotor and they've made it such that the center of the pads down in here will align with your brake rotor. If you mill the inside face instead of the outside face, you are going to change that distance between the wheel and that brake rotor and this brake caliper, and you will ruin your brake caliper. So, nothing wrong with milling this piece to make it a proper spacer, but Always, 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 you must mill the outside face only. So that is what I did. I milled the outside face so that the total space on this was 1.014, which is what I needed. And then that became my spacer on that side. I made the spacer on the other side the same, 1.014. Actually, shout out to my friend Josh at Steel City Blacksmithing. He's the one that made that spacer for me. Really appreciate it. I do not have a lathe or any of the uh, machinist equipment, so... Appreciate him helping me out with that. Now we've covered two of the rear wheel trifecta. We've talked about centering your rear wheel, how to measure it so that it's in perfect alignment with those axle plates. And then we've talked about the second step, which was making sure that your brake caliper, which is gonna act as one of your spacers, stays centered on your brake rotor. The final step in our rear wheel alignment process is to make sure that our rear sprocket is in plane with our front sprocket. Now, on my build, I got very lucky with this process, potentially because I'm using a stock rear wheel and a stock sprocket and a stock brake caliper. But regardless, when I made the two spacers equidistant on either side, kept that brake caliper in alignment with that brake rotor and moved on to this third step, I found that a flat sprocket was actually the perfect alignment from rear sprocket to front sprocket. I didn't need to do anything else. It lined up perfectly and I was ready to throw a chain on. That's great for me, but what if you are running something unusual in the back? What if you went to an 18 in the rear or even one of those crazy guys that went to a 19 in the rear? Your experience might be a little different and that takes us into the two different ways that you can offset your sprocket. The first is one that I actually have right here in front of me because stupidly, I thought before measuring that I was definitely going to need to push my sprocket further out in order to bring it into alignment with the front. That didn't end up being the case, but I had bought this, which is called a dished sprocket. If you see right here, this is the surface that meets with the rear wheel and there's a slight curve outward might be able to see it if I put it, yeah, you can see it in the light here and the, the way that it shines on this center hub. The rest of this sprocket is essentially bent out, which offsets, I would say, about a quarter inch. It's pushing it away from the wheel about a quarter inch. And these are referred to as dished sprockets. Now, when you buy a dished sprocket, you actually purchase it based on the offset dimension. So you would put a flat sprocket on your bike and then you would say, okay, I need a quarter inch offset. And you would buy a dished sprocket that has a 0.25 offset. 
The reason I don't recommend that you make this mistake that I made and buy a dished sprocket is because you could just buy a flat sprocket and put shims behind it. And then you don't need to worry about whether that dish is perfect or maybe it needs just a little bit more and then you end up shimming it anyway. The way that we're going to check how much of an offset we need is we're gonna use a straight edge. Now, in my case, I have always used this guy right here. This is an old, I just gotta show you guys this. This is a super cool vintage level that I got from my dad that he got from his dad who was a carpenter. Really old level here made out of cast aluminum. I love this thing. So what I do is I use this to check my sprockets. So you're gonna place the face of any straight tool on your rear sprocket, and then you're gonna line that thing up and see if the front sprocket and the rear sprocket are in perfect plane. And then you'll either see that they both touch, in which case your alignment is good, or that rear sprocket needs to come out in order to come into plane with the front. If that's the case, like I said, you can purchase a shim kit for these sprockets. They go behind your sprocket, in between your sprocket and your wheel. You would put the appropriate number of shims to bring them into perfect alignment, and then you are done. That is the end of the process. You've got all three steps completed. Your rear wheel is now perfectly aligned. Now you would be fine to cut the video off here and say, that's it, that's all I needed, I am good to go. But if you, like me, are retaining your stock axle, you might have one extra step in this process. And the reason for that is that most soft tail frames or swing arm frames are wider than most hard tail frames. And when you go from a wider axle spacing to a narrower axle spacing, you're gonna find that your axle itself is now too long. So when you go to put that axle nut on and tighten it down, it bottoms out against the axle before it ever hits the axle plate. There are three different ways that you can address this problem. The first is to use an additional spacer on the outside of your axle plate. I'll roll in a shot right here of my bike. This is the approach that I took on mine. I made a spacer that took up that extra gap between the threads and the axle plate itself. The reason I did it this way is not because I super love the idea of putting a spacer on the outside or some stylistic choice. For me, I was trying to keep the cost down on this build. I'll be completely honest with you. I put that axle through, I wanted to get onto the next step and I said, oh, I can just put a spacer here and this will work fine. And it has for the last two years. So there's nothing wrong with this approach, but you might wanna do something a little cleaner on your bike, so let me give you those options as well. Another option to take here would be to have a machine shop mill your axle down. So essentially they're gonna cut off some of the threads on the end, they're gonna continue the threads down the axle, essentially shortening your axle. The other option would be for you to buy a brand new axle that is the appropriate length for your hardtail. One additional factor about why I didn't do this is because I actually wasn't able to find an axle that fit. So for me, it was either use the spacer on the outside or have a machine shop turn my current axle down. Now, if you've never worked with a machine shop, let me tell you, things take a while, okay? I can't speak for every machine shop in the country, but these places tend to be very backed up. I don't know if there's a machinist shortage and that's what's causing this, but expect it to take several weeks for them to get to your very small project of machining down the axle. And will it be less expensive than buying a new axle altogether? Probably not. I would have guessed that they would be about the same cost. So really the machine shop route would be for somebody who has no other option because there's not a commercially available axle that is the right width for you. And you don't wanna go the exterior spacer route like I did. Once you've got all these steps complete and your rear wheel is now aligned in your frame, it's time to move on to the final step, which is to put on your chain and make sure your chain is aligned properly. Check out this video right here. I did a full breakdown exactly like what you see today, all about how to properly align your chain using a simple $15 tool. It's a very easy way for you to make sure that your chain is in alignment now and stays in alignment in the future. Thanks for watching Grease's Garage and I'll catch you guys next week.